You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. A comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerard. And welcome on in. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm your host, Scott Gerard. Good show for you this week. Uh, Southern Utah's head coach Ed Lamb will join us here in just a moment. Southern Utah with a big victory over Northern Colorado by the score of 30-3. to Also, Eastern Washington, oh, Eastern Washington quarterback Jordan West will join us as he had an impressive performance in uh, week number four. Also, Craig Haley from Stats will join us to discuss his perspective on this past week as well. Let's get through some of the scores and some of the headlines from this previous weekend's action. First off, Montana State and Eastern Washington Boy, we thought that game would be good, and it did not disappoint. The Eagles pick up a 55-50 win over the Bobcats. Jordan West, six touchdown passes. Cooper Cup with three scores as well. Cup is just one touchdown shy of Eric Kimball for the all-time touchdown scoring record in conference history. Weber State got a big win over Sacramento State, 32-14. to Other non-conference action included a game uh, between the Missouri Valleys, Northern Iowa, and Cal Poly. Didn't start well for the Mustangs. Northern Iowa jumped out to an early two-score lead in which uh, they were really never able to recover from. Cal Poly still nationally ranked, though, after that uh, 34 to 20 loss. Big South Conference member Liberty got a win over Montana 31 to 21. Grizzlies started slow and had to endure an injury to their quarterback Brady Gustafson. However, backup quarterback Chad Challenge uh, with 228 passing yards and a touchdown in relief. Grizzlies open up conference play this week against Northern Arizona. And about those Lumberjacks, NAU went down to Tucson to take on Arizona. NAU trailed early 14 to 13 in the second quarter. Uh, however, it was all Wildcats after that final score there 77 to 13 idaho state traveled to take on boise state broncos got the win there 52 to nothing north dakota traveled to fargo to face in-state rival north dakota state two had not played since 2003 this one didn't end well for und pair of teams were tied at three after the end of the first quarter bison turned it on though and ended up with a 34 to 9 victory ron gould and uc davis traveled to hawaii to take on norm chow and the rainbow warriors uc davis had a 10-6 lead in the second quarter however hawaii pulls away for a 47 47- to 27 victory and finally the lone conference game of the week ended with a 30 to 3 southern utah win over northern colorado thunderbirds ammon olsen rushes for two touchdowns in the game linebacker mike needham gets a pick six and suu starts off conference play at one and oh speaking of that let's get out to the phones welcome in southern utah head coach ed lamb kind enough to join us coach how are you i'm well thanks for having me scott uh, you know, it's interesting, kind of the roller coaster you've been on, even in the first three weeks. You scare the living daylights out of Utah State, lose that game very closely in Logan, and then you struggle at South Dakota State, but then rebound nicely with the victory last weekend. What's this early part of the season been like for your team? You said it. Uh, certainly, it's been a roller coaster. Have emotions, uh, you know, have. have um, to our players and, and the local media quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. I really feel like the, the team has put in a lot of work in the off season to try to overcome a difficult year last season. And and we came out of that Utah State game, I think, as a team feeling um, feeling pretty confident and uh, and maybe even overconfident and, and feeling like all that hard work was about to pay off. I didn't think we gave uh, South Dakota State our full attention. I thought that we didn't handle the uh, – the success, if you can call it that, of coming away uh, with a, what should have been a victory at Utah State. I didn't think we handled that well. I didn't think that we uh, stayed humble and hungry. And we played really poorly. We played in coast really poorly at South Dakota State. I'm pleased with the way the guys responded to that and uh, prepared hard for Northern Colorado. So did you have to set that tone in the locker room after that South Dakota State game, or did the leadership of that team take over and uh, lead your team emotionally to that win last week? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the week where they needed me and, and uh, they needed a message loud and clear was for the South Dakota State week, and that's where I feel like I failed. You know, I, I felt very confident and uh, so optimistic about the future as we prepared for South Dakota State. And I think our team uh, fed off of that, and, and we, we didn't have the edge that we need, and, and that is our true character. And So, actually, after losing to South Dakota State, I, don't, I, don't, I think any coach could have had them motivated uh-huh. for Northern Colorado. You've done a great job of getting those uh, Utah players to play well there at Southern Utah. And FCS caliber Utah players, Mike Needham, two interceptions. He's a St. George guy, had a pick six in that game. How important are those guys to the success of your program? 
I think there are always uh, there's a little more motivation for someone who's local and representing, you know, if they're from Southern Utah and they're representing uh, Southern Utah University and even Utah at large, as you said, I, I think there's a certain amount of pride. And, and I think all of our players, by the time they get into starting roles and are playing significant roles as upperclassmen, no matter where they're from, they've got a certain pride in the uniform. But I, I think uh, some of the guys from local areas can come in with a little more motivation, a little more pride in representing the school within their state. You've got a Division II team coming into your place for homecoming this weekend. Now, granted, the roller coaster season you've been on so far, do you have to, you know, bring that message home that you can't take a week off, or do you think that message has already been made after kind of the uh, unsettled start of the season you've had? Well, I believe as a coach, you get what you emphasize, and I'm really working hard to emphasize that it's really every week is about us being as good as we can possibly be, and there's there's no problem with players taking a look at video and making judgments about where we match up favorably. But great players and great teams, they have big games when they're supposed to, and they handle business when they're supposed to. And so I've just been uh, preaching that we want to be as good as we can be regardless of the opponent, and I hope that that will be a message that the players can hold on to and perform well this week. Ammon Olson's in his second year with your program. How has he developed from year one to year two, not just as a player, but a guy that you expect to kind of take the leadership reins of this team? His talent uh, has been there since his freshman year when we signed him. And um, you know, last year, I thought he, he struggled primarily because he was not getting practice preparations. We yeah. had Aaron Cantu as a returning senior quarterback, and Aaron had led us uh, to eight victories the season before. And, and so, you know, but in all regards, Aaron was the starter, and he was the one getting the, the preparations, and he was the one that uh, was able to flourish in a leadership role. And then about midway through the season, it became clear that Ammon was uh, playing better, and, and so Ammon was put into the starting role. And really, it was just it was not a good situation for Aaron. It was not a good situation for Ammon. It was not a good situation for our team. And uh, in hindsight, I, I wish that I would have handled it differently. This year has been completely different. Ammon has been the starter since the uh, about the fourth game of last season. Throughout the offseason, his leadership really flourished and, of course, his, his reads and timing and execution is, is benefited as well from taking all of the starting reps in practice. I, I hate to do this to you because coaches get really annoyed when you look ahead, but just as a general sense on the conference, uh, you've got a game against Weber State coming up on October 2nd. Uh, you know how difficult it was in life pre-Big Sky Conference. How special is this game to this university to, as a member of the Big Sky Conference to take on Weber State and really develop that rivalry game? It's a huge game for us and, and I believe for them too. There are uh, relationships amongst the players that uh, were high school teammates or knew of each other or grew up playing Little League Baseball together. Uh, on the coaching staff, we've had coaches that have coached us at both schools, played at the other school, and uh, played together in college when back in our college days. So there's a familiarity there. I think there's a high level of respect both ways. And um, and it's, you know, it, 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 on that week, uh, of course, it's the most important game, and then when the off season comes around, it's something that I think the winner of that game can have a tremendous sense of satisfaction. Well, Coach, once again, congratulations on that win last week. Keep it rolling. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks, Scott. You got it. Ed Lamb, one of the good guys, uh, head coach at Southern Utah, kind enough to join us here on this week in Big Sky Football. All right, coming up next, we'll announce your Root Sports Big Sky Football Players of the Week. We'll also chat with Eastern Washington quarterback Jordan West. All straight ahead, segment number two on the way on this week in Big Sky Football. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, 
genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them. Values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Segment number two here on This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm your host, Scott Gerard. Now, normally we reveal our Root Sports Players of the Week in segment number three, but you know what? Why wait? Let's just get to them right now. Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week from Eastern Washington, Jordan West. West completed 21 of 24 passes for 410 yards, six touchdowns, no big deal. As the Eagles picked up a 55-50 to 50 victory over Montana State. West also earned the FCS Player of the Week from the NCAA and the Stats FCS Co-Offensive Player of the Week Award. Uh, so a lot of hardware going the way of Jordan West. And we'll chat with him here in just a moment. Weber State earns two Root Sports Players of the Week honors. First, Wildcat Safety Jawan Harrison started in place of an injured Mitch Tulane and promptly had three interceptions in Weber's 32-14 to 14 victory over Sacramento State. And Wildcat kicker Josh Kiala made four field goals, including 48-yard field goals, uh, including a 48-yard career-long kick to win the Root Sports Special Teams Player of the Week. Also, five touchbacks. His punting average was over 40 yards, so a uh, big night for him as well. Uh, remember, Root Sports is your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. This week's Big Sky Conference game on Root Sports features Northern Arizona taking on the Montana Grizzlies. Grizzlies losers are two in a row trying to rebound in a conference opener for both games. Kickoff will be at 2 o'clock Mountain Time. will also be available on DirecTV's Audience Network. All right, let's go out to the phones and welcome in your Offensive Player of the Week, Eastern Washington quarterback Jordan West. Jordan, how are you, man? Uh, doing really good. Doing really good. Congratulations on an impressive performance. Uh, you were slinging it pretty good. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, offense was clicking in general. I mean, we were moving the ball well, and things were just going our way. Offensive shootout again against Montana State. Their quarterback, Dakota Prukup, one of the tops in the nation. Did you did you kind of feel like it was a heavyweight battle between the two of you going into this game? Uh, a little bit, yeah. He was definitely he was turning on offense. He was moving the ball on the ground and through the air. He looked really good out there, and uh, he's definitely an impressive quarterback. Now, points haven't been a problem for your team this year. Uh, however, you did start the season 0-2. So what's it like to finally get that first W of the season? Yeah, it's definitely nice to uh, get the first one under our belt. We needed it starting off this season. 0-3 wasn't really an option that we were looking at. And uh, to get it against Montana State in a big game at home was definitely huge. No doubt about it. Uh, you played mostly spot duty for the last uh, for the few years in Cheney, um, but you, you studied under a guy that obviously knew how to do a lot of damage uh, and a really good quarterback before you. What were you able to learn from him, and uh, how did that prepare you for being the starting uh, starting guy in Cheney? Yeah, the last over the last three years, I mean, being under Vern and then Kyle Padron while I was here and uh, another old guy that taught me a lot, Anthony Vito. It was just really good to be under some great quarterbacks and uh, obviously good couple coaches, Coach Hill and Coach Baldwin, have definitely helped me through a lot. And uh, I've just progressed in my game over these three years a ton just with the reads and comfortable in the pocket and just with the offense in general. And, and and I'm not, by the way, in no way, shape, or form taking anything away from your performance, but i got to imagine Cooper Cup would make a lot of quarterbacks look good. <laughs> Without a doubt. I mean, you just kind of get that guy the ball, and he'll always seem to do something special with it. So it's definitely a luxury that it's nice having. And uh, it's not just him. I mean, Kendrick Bourne came up with a couple big catches for me on the sideline and makes Splendorio with a lot of rack, and it was, it was a big game. How much fun is this system to play in as a quarterback? Uh, I couldn't imagine one much more fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, getting to stand back there and just swing it on third and fourth down and just let the players go to work, it's nice. How much autonomy does your coach give you as far as making checks and be able to improvise a little bit on the field? I mean, yeah, we go into it with plans on if we see certain things, like we're going to check to this. So, I mean, there's more plan checks, but still it comes down to what I see on the field and, uh, yeah, what I see and then making protection calls or 
either if it's man coverage going at them or whatever it is. Well, I got to imagine with that, you know, with that ability to be able to do that also comes a lot of responsibility and film work and, and classroom work and all that to make sure that you're prepared to be able to do those things out on the field. Yeah, absolutely. A film is a huge part of it. And, I mean, you got to stay in there constantly to see if they're changing anything up from previous weeks or just make sure you got their stuff down. Jordan West, uh, quarterback from Eastern Washington, joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. You open up conference play this week against Sacramento State. I know it's still as we tape this earlier in the week, but uh, what do you think uh, when you see these guys on film? What jumps out at you? Uh, they definitely have some good players on that team. Uh, strong middle linebacker. Some young guys at the corner spots that we might try to take advantage of, but uh, they're definitely a stout defense, and it's it's a, a first game in conference, like you're saying. So we got to go in there and get our first win in conference. When we get a chance to chat with some of the players on this show, we try to get to know you a little bit just off the field. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story. What uh, was in your decision-making process in going to Eastern Washington? Well, I was actually a preferred walk-on. I was kind of a guy that didn't do much in high school. I was a <laughs> one-year starter at Liberty High in, uh, in Renton, Washington, and um, really, I was kind of just under the radar, and I worked with a guy named Steve Jervis, and uh, he kind of talked to some of the coaches here, and they gave me an opportunity to come on as a preferred walk-on, and I made the most of it, and it was a humbling experience, and I couldn't be happier on where I ended up and how I'm doing. So do you carry a little bit of a chip on your shoulder that there weren't a lot of offers out there? I mean, I've always been kind of just like, I, I've been taught my whole life to kind of have a chip on your shoulder and just work hard and just do your thing and that's kind of just the mentality i've been taking well jordan man we appreciate it this has been a fun conversation good luck the rest of the way and we look forward to catching up with you again soon thank you very much i appreciate it you got it jordan west quarterback of eastern washington as they've got a battle against sacramento state and a big week, uh, previous weekend for him again 21 and 24 passing six touchdowns over 400 yards and is your big sky offensive player of the week all right when we come back we'll take a look at all the upcoming tv games for this upcoming weekend we'll also chat with craig haley of stats about the state of fcs football it's all straight ahead segment number three coming up next on this week in big sky football We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back, working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Welcome on back to uh, segment number three here on This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm your host, Scott Gerard. All right, uh, coming up here in a moment, we'll chat with Craig Haley from Stats. But let's get you a rundown of the games coming up this weekend and as well where you can watch them whether on TV or on your computer. First, UC Davis will take on North Dakota. That game will be on Midco Sports Network and will also be available on WatchBigSky.com. That game available at 1 o'clock Central Time. Then Cal Poly travels to Bozeman to take on Montana State. That game kicks off at 1.35 Mountain Time. It will be available on Cal's Media in Montana, KSBY in St. Louis Bispo. Also, another game you can watch on WatchBigSky.com. Weber State will travel to Northern Colorado. A 1.35 Mountain Time kickoff will be televised on Comcast Entertainment Television by Xfinity in Colorado. And, of course, WatchBigSky.com. Other games include Western Oregon at Portland State. That game available on Watch Big Sky with a 2.05 Pacific start time to that game as well. Uh, Brevard College 
in Cedar City taking on Southern Utah. 6 o'clock start time again on WatchBigSky.com. Then Idaho State faces off a against a Mountain West team for the second straight week. They'll travel to Vegas to take on UNLV. Bengals and Rebels kick off 6 o'clock time on the Mountain West Network. And finally, Eastern Washington battling Sacramento State. Uh, 7 o'clock Pacific time available on WatchBigSky.com. Root Sports is your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. This week's Big Sky Showdown on Root Sports features Northern Arizona against Montana in the conference opener for both teams. Game kicks off at 2 o'clock Mountain Time. will be available on DirecTV's Audience Network. Remember to use the hashtag WhereIRoot for a chance to be included in the broadcast. All right, time to join up with our good friend Craig Haley, FCS Senior Editor for Stats. Craig, how you doing, my friend? Doing very well. How about yourself, Scott? I'm doing well. All right, so let's start off with this question. Uh, did you, <laughs> mo- I mean, frankly, Eastern Washington and Montana State, how much fun did you have watching that game? <laughs> uh, somehow I knew you were going to ask that, uh, gonna talk about that game first. Unbelievable, yes. I mean, I think uh, last week when we talked, I, I mentioned that they could get back to the 50s again, and, and they, they did. <laughs> yes, I mean, you did. <laughs> end-to-end action. Uh, you you got to love it. Um, not surprising with those teams um yeah i mean it's just a fun way to to spend a saturday eagles quarterback jordan west uh, brings home a bunch of national awards for that performance uh it, it, can he start to be talked about as a candidate for some of the end of the year awards I think so. Uh, I mean, it, it, he's now got the job uh, on a full-time basis, and, and I think he'll, he'll keep doing, you know, getting better. Um, obviously, awards aren't just about stats, and uh, he's but he's getting it done. I mean, now they hope to get on a, a winning streak. Um, you know, he's got such a, a, a diverse uh, receiving core and, and the best receiver in the nation in Cooper Cup. So, yeah, he's going to have a big year. Uh, no doubt he'll, he'll be added to some lists. Of course, Dakota Prukup, uh, no slouch either. He had a monster game for Montana State, over 500 yards of total offense. Uh, if, take the take the score out of it for a moment, and I think mean, that's impossible to do. But who do you think had the better performance in that game, Prukup or West? That's a tough one. <laughs> I think uh, the Big Sky had a tough time picking a, an offensive player of the week. Uh, I'm going to go slightly to Jordan on that um, just because – he was perfect almost every pass. I mean, 21 out of 24. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, I mean, almost running for 200 yards. It's, it was just ridiculous for a quarterback. Um, I, I could go either way, but I, I guess I'm going to go with Jordan on this one. Five big sky teams are ranked this week in the polls. Two of them will meet this weekend in Bozeman, 15th ranked Montana State, up against 20th ranked Cal Poly. Both teams coming off tough losses. What are your expectations on this one? Well, it should be a, a great game, and, and another high-scoring one when, when they're involved, especially Montana State. I mean, it's the only ranked, uh, the only game between two ranked teams in the nation this week, and, and last week the Big Sky had that spotlight as well with, with the different games. I, I like um, I like what Cal Poly can do in, as far as a, a short uh, work week where you only have a week to prepare for them. Um, I think that's going to be tough on a Montana State team that's you know, hasn't quite figured out uh, how to improve their defense. I mean, I'm sure they will throughout the year, but, you know, they, they are coming off a, a poor season in that regard. Um, you know, it's two different styles. Uh, I, I think Pal, Cal, Pal, Cal Pyle really wants to just grind them out, and, and uh, I think, you know, Chris Brown seems to be at a higher level here in his senior year. Um, I, a toss-up kind of game, a great game. I, I think Cal Poly can get it done in Bozeman. You know, it's probably way, way too early to have this conversation, but I get the sense that this Big Sky Conference is, there's a lot of parity in it, and it means a lot of teams are going to feast on each other throughout the course of the season. Could that come back to bite them a little bit when it comes to playoff selection time? Well, yeah. I mean, last last year, I mean, you had about six candidates in, in mid uh, mid November for for either the the, the automatic berth or, or uh, at large bids, and I think you're going to have a same kind of group like that. And you know, it's going to be tough to get that many teams in the playoffs. And, and somebody, uh, you know, you go back to non conference. That's going to factor who you played, who, who how you did against them. Um, you know, these are early games in conference. You really need to get ahead in, in the race and not play from behind um, just because there are so many candidates in the league. No doubt. Northern Arizona and Montana on Root Sports this weekend. Uh, Two teams coming off tough losses. Uh, Montana, after that impressive opening game uh, win, is now uh, giving back two 
games. Uh, Brady Gustafson left the game last week with an injury. So how do you see the Grizzlies playing in this game against Northern Arizona? Well, I mean, uh, you know, Chad came in and did a pretty good job in relief. Um, this is this is one of those must-win games. I mean, we're talking about you, you can't fall too far behind, and uh, you know, Montana can't go one and three here. They they've got to get this win at home. Um, you know, Northern Arizona has, has played well. Um, you know, had a veteran offense uh, coming back. It's tough to go to Montana and win. I mean, I think Northern Arizona has a chance here, but uh, at the same time, you know, uh, Coach Stitt has to get this team rallied, the, the Grizz, and, and they really need to, you know, get a win here and start to get on a roll.